All right, in this video, this is video number one to the Absolute Value Math Tutorial Series. And in this video, we're going to look at a basic introduction and some basic equations. These four examples down here. In future videos, we will look at more complex absolute value equations as well as absolute value inequalities and their graphs. When I say graphs, we will be graphing on a number line and then later on we will actually graph equations of absolute value functions, but that comes a lot later. So what is absolute value? Absolute value, we use these bars. So notice I have bars around a lot of these uh, pieces down here. And the absolute value of four is equal to four. The absolute value of negative four is positive four. But what the heck does that mean? When you see the absolute value of some number, in this case four, I'm gonna put a dot on four. I'm using that number right there. An absolute value means how far is this number from zero? Well, one, two, three, four units. There's our answer. The number four is four units from zero. The same thing applies to this number. Let's take negative four, let's plot it on a number line. The absolute value of negative four, how far is this from zero? When we talk about how far something is, we wanna use a positive number. So it's still going to be one, two, three, four units from zero. That's why the absolute value of a negative number will always be a positive. The absolute value of a positive number is that positive number. And I guess it's worth mentioning the absolute value of zero is going to be simply zero. So it doesn't change anything there either. With that said, let's throw a little bit of algebra into the picture and let's do these two problems here. We want to take the absolute value of some number and we want it to be equal to seven. Now there's two answers here. X is gonna be equal to a positive seven and X is going to be equal to a negative seven. The reason why is this. If I come up here and put a dot on seven and I also put a dot on negative seven, notice how far is this dot seven from zero? It is seven units from zero. The same thing applies to negative seven. How far is that dot from zero? It is seven units from zero as well. And the reason why we have two answers is because we can take the absolute value of seven, this number here, the absolute value of seven is seven, but we can also take the absolute value of this number. Notice we're saying X can be this or this. So if we take the absolute value of negative seven, we also get a positive seven there as well. Very similar to number one and number two, where we took the absolute value of a positive number and a negative number, yet we got the same answer for both of those. Point here is this, you are going to have absolute value equations quite often where you have two solutions. And in this case, our two solutions are seven and negative seven. Now be careful with number four. Some people jump the gun. They're thinking, okay, absolute value always has two answers, and that is not correct. I see this all the time when I'm teaching absolute value equations. Students will say, okay, our two answers are negative six and positive six. Doesn't matter which one you write down first. Here, neither one of them are correct. And let me explain why this is not the correct answer before I do give you the correct answer. If we take negative six and we plug it into X, because we're saying X is equal to negative six. Well, if you plug negative six into here, the absolute value of negative six is not equal to negative six. It's equal to a positive six. That is not correct. The same thing applies to this six here. The absolute value of six is not negative six. The absolute value of six is positive six. So you may wonder, what is the answer to number four here? The answer is no solution. It is impossible to take the absolute value of some number and get a negative answer. Now later on when we do more advanced equations and we start putting more stuff inside of here and we start throwing things out here and more stuff over here, then that will tack on a little bit more difficulty to what you're seeing right now. But if all we have is the absolute value of something and it's equal to a negative number, always no solution. Bear in mind, when we do more advanced equations, you have to be careful and not jump the gun on this as well. More on that soon, and that's it for this video. I hope it helped.